Dr. Tan, how common is the freezing of eggs in Malaysia? We talk about some history, like, I mean like previously, egg freezing was like a taboo because why you want to freeze eggs of a single woman? But now it has been very popular in the news, uh, celebrities are doing it and even uh, companies like Apple, Google and Facebook are offering uh, egg freezing to their employees. Oh, ah, okay. oh that's interesting. Yeah. So all this certainly has uh, brought up the news perspective for the uh, women to empower them, to give them the re reproductive uh, freedom. Mm. So as for in Malaysia, we don't have the exact data, but in my clinic, okay, let's say 5% um, of the total egg retriever uh, are f f for the egg freezing. So egg retriever is an indicator we use in our IVF clinic. Mm. All right? So to give you some idea, let's say from 2011 and, and 2017 until like seven years, mm -hmm. we have like 110 cases of egg freezing, like social egg freezing. Right. And for 2018 and 2019, just two years, we have already surpassed 120 cases. Wow. Okay. So you can see the trends. Okay. Yeah. So it's basically doubling up in a shorter span exactly. of time. Right, yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. So just now you said, um, it's getting more common with, with mm. single women, it's more acceptable. But what about egg freezing for married couples? I mean, do you, you must have some of those. Yeah, definitely. So it's not only for a single, I mean like mm. egg freezing can for can be a lot of reasons, all right? So generally that the social egg freezing and also there's some for the medical reasons. All right. For, let's say for the social egg freezing, basically why they do it because they are still not in, the, in a situation to build a family. Mm -hmm. Maybe they want to delay because of their career. Mm. They haven't met someone right, or they just just unready. Mm. Right? Right. In terms of uh, for medical reasons, so uh, we are doing the egg freezing for those that are diagnosed with cancer, and because sometimes we know that the chemotherapy or radiotherapy right, right. might be very toxic to the reproductive organs, especially to the ovaries. So. We want to freeze their eggs so that hopefully they still have maintained their fertility potential. Okay. Right. And in some rare cases, and certain women have like carry certain genetic conditions or autoimmune uh, diseases that can make them to have a menopause earlier. Right. Uh, okay. So, so they want to the, harvest yeah. the eggs before the menopause. Oh, happens. I see. Okay. Okay. Right. 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 I see. Hmm. Okay, that's so, so, so. Okay, so we've got the social reasons and then the yeah, medical reasons. Yeah. Understand? Okay. So what what happens in egg freezing? What's the process from sort of start to finish? A woman comes to you, mm -hmm. I come to you and go, I want to be a mom. I don't want to be a mom right now. Right. What happens? So uh, basically, they will go through the same IVF process mm. until the egg retriever, all right? So they start off with the initial consultation. We want to know whether they are healthy, any other underlying conditions, right? And usually we will do an ultrasound scan to check um, the, the womb, also the egg reserve, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes we will do some uh, blood checkup to check on the hormones, the ovarian reserve, and also the screen through the infectious diseases. So if everything is ready, then they will start the hormone injection on the first or second day of their periods and usually lasts about 10 to 12 days of the injection and I will monitor the growth of the eggs, the number of the eggs and then we will decide when's the best time to harvest the eggs. Okay. So what's the hormone injection for? Okay, so the hormone injections are basically to stimulate all the follicles in the ovaries. Let's say in the normal circumstances, this month you have 20 eggs, let's say only one will be selected, matured and ovulate. By giving the hormonal injections, uh, we want these 20 eggs to grow together, synchronize, so that we can, using the shortest time, to harvest as many eggs as possible. Okay. So these 20 eggs, hmm. they're there waiting to, to come down. Only hmm. Naturally, only hmm. one comes up. What happens to the 19 left behind? 19 will be just like wiped off of, for the next period. So, in a way that, uh, to answer your question, meaning mm. that you are, when you do the stimulation, it's not wasting your eggs. 
this 19x right. anyway is going to be disappear for the next month. Okay. So by doing the injection, I just try to fulfill the full potential of your ovaries for this month. I cannot borrow eggs from the next month. Right, right, I yeah. see. Right. So this also helped debunk <coughs> the myth of uh, IVF stimulation causes you to have early menopause. It doesn't. Oh, okay. so that's one of the myths that's there. Yeah. That's interesting. We're going to get back to some myths in a minute. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Right. So how many times can you do this then? So obviously we have, how many eggs do we have? Are we <laughs> born with the yeah. total amount of eggs so, that we've so got? So every woman is different. Even I nice same age, same uh, indicator. You, you can have 15 eggs, and she, she might have uh, 20 eggs. Every woman is different, mm -hmm. right? right? So basically, women are born with a finite amount of eggs. So when you are born, you have one to two millions. By the time you're getting your first period, you're already down to 400 to 500,000 eggs. Right. And every month, when you have a batch of eggs standing by, like I said, one matured, ovulate, by next month, these badges of eggs will just disappear. So every month, every year is just going downhill. So after 35, the drop is more drastic, above 40 and even faster. And by the time 50 years old, on average 50 years old, a woman go into menopause. Right. So when you're menopause, means there's no more no eggs. No more eggs. Yeah. So basically, it's like, I never realized this. This is like a light bulb moment. What do you mean? Because like I thought, okay, I know a lot about my body, but I just thought, okay, menopause is when you stop the bleeding yeah. part of menses. Yeah. I didn't realize it it's meant you're out of eggs. You're out yeah. of eggs, you're dry, yeah. there's nothing right. else in there. Because the ovaries control your hormones. So there's the hormone changes that causes the period shredding. Yeah. Right. right. Mm. That's so okay, now that's like... Wow, <laughs> okay, ding, ding, ding. Okay, uh, let's go back to, to what we're saying. So, okay, so the hormone injection is meant to stimulate you mm. releasing all of the, the eggs, eggs that's in the, the follicles. So that the, all the eggs can grow synchronized, so that right, you right. can harvest. All of I it. said you have 20, I can try to harvest right. uh, 20. 20. So the injections are, you're saying, so between yeah, 10 to 12, 10 to 12 days. days. And we'll monitor, see the number of eggs, see the growth, and then we'll decide which is the best timing to harvest the eggs. How do you see the growth? Like, do you, what, do you scan? Yeah, we do a scan, a uh, vagina scan, mm -hmm. usually, vagina scan. And then you see the size, right? Normally, we we'll do a serial scan, normally right. two to three times, mm -hmm. and then we can see the development. Mm -hmm. When it, it reaches a certain size, and then we will trigger off the ovulation and we will do the egg harvesting. So how do you trigger off the ovulation? We use a special hormone injection. Normally, it's a human, uh, we call it a HCG, a human coronate okay. gonadotrophin. So it's like, that's the firing pistol. Go! Yeah. And then all the eggs... <laughs> <are> okay, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So right, we right, will right, like trigger yeah. off the maturation of the egg so that right. when I harvest, Hopefully, all the eggs are matured and okay. then can be frozen. Okay. So, the egg harvesting uh, is done under a short general anesthesia. Right. The process probably f 10 to 15 minutes. And um, after that, you feel a bit of cramp, but basically, you can go back uh, after one or two hours. Okay. Right. So, you're an outpatient. Yeah. So, how is it harvested? I have this image of this like vacuum cleaner going <laughs> sort of out there. Going, yeah, and when, you <laughs> how, how, when you put the eggs, that's, no, no, yeah. no. How do you get them out? Get them first, out first. Where you put, put them? them yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Is it okay? I show you a picture. So this is a womb. This is okay. the ovary. Right. When you have the injections, your eggs are growing. So the ovary is technically bigger, heavier, and by gravity, it will come down to near to the vagina. Right. Okay. So by doing the vagina scan, right. And then we have uh, this special aspiration needle. We will go in. And then you wait, wait. Oh. As 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 you go to I, I get it. I get it. Can I mm. can I help with my yeah, anatomy? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So basically, the 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 follicles, mm -hmm. the sacs, basically mm -hmm. are are so heavy. Imagine like a bag of oranges or something. Mm -hmm. You see how they're lumpy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So they kind of push down and they go towards the vaginal canal. Right. Yeah. So then just to the side of the vagina. So right. when I put in the probe. And then it's just like very near. So I just So it's like a little needle a, just yeah, reaching layer, over and yeah. whoop, inside there. And it's like a mm. vacuum and then it all will, up. Yeah, vacuum. Aspirate the eggs out from the ovaries. So once it aspirate, you go through this tube. And then this tube uh, is sent to the workstation for the embryologist. They will check whether it's the egg inside or not. 
Right. Right. So this is what you carry. Is that what the, the, the egg the, looks like or yeah. is that an empty sac? This one is a follicle. Right. From the scan, we normally cannot look at the eggs. It's too small to be seen from I the see, scan. I see, I see with the neck. Okay. So all the, we usually measure the follicle. Right. And then follicle is the house for the eggs. Got so it. we will put the needle to the follicle and aspirate all the fluid out. Hopefully, the eggs will come you out suck together. Up the eggs at the same yeah. time. Yeah. So you weren't wrong. It is like a vacuum in a way. It is yeah. like a vacuum. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. So, sorry, then we've got this canister of this like mm. really precious yes. eggs. Yeah. It, I have images now of someone running down the hallway. Move out yeah. of the way! So, so in a specialized IVF clinic, you don't have this issue because the lab is just beside of your OT, right, right, okay. your operation theater. So when I aspirate to this one, I just pass it to my embryologist. I mean, the nurse will pass this wow, to okay, the embryologist. Yeah. Right. So what does the embryologist do? Like to check the embryologist the basically a scientist in the IVF lab. Yeah. Mm. They will check the eggs, see whether it's mature or not, see the quality. And those of certain quality, those mature ones will be frozen there. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, is it like some kind of freezer tray system that you, mm. you put them in? Like, a, do they go in a Petri yeah, dish? We, or? We, we have a specialized tube. Right. We use something called a vitrification method. So, uh, we will freeze it uh, and freeze the eggs under uh, minus 196 degrees Celsius right. in a nitrogen tank. Yeah. Right? That's freezing. Yeah. So the embryologist, after checking the eggs, uh, once they say it's matured, then they will extract the fluid out of the eggs and then do the rapid freezing. Okay. Right, so that we can store it properly. Right. Okay. Yeah. This method is very good because it can almost achieve a 100% survival rate. Almost? Almost. Yeah. So is rapid freezing, did they used to freeze it a different way before? I mean, is this mm. a new technology? Previously, when the start of the uh, freezing is, uh, we call it something, uh, we call it in the 1980s, it's a slow freezing, all right? So that time, we, when you we come here and freeze, then we have a disclaimer, say, we can freeze for you, but the, the next time when you come uh, and try to freeze it, uh, take it out, it, it might only have like 60% survive. Oh, we cannot yeah. guarantee that. Yeah. Okay, okay, I see. So, but if the, now the current technology is called a cryotech. We are using a cryotech vitrification uh, method. Mm -hmm. So it almost 100%. Basically, for the eggs, we have 96, 97%. For the embryos, we have 100%. Okay. Right. So you can freeze embryos that are fertilized mm. eggs as well as eggs? Yes. We can freeze sperm, freeze eggs, and also embryos. My goodness. And it's at the same 192 yeah. degrees negative. Basically, the embryo is the best, 100%. Mm -hmm. The eggs is 96, 97%. Sperm, actually lesser, probably 70, 80%. Right. Yeah. But because sperms come in millions normally, so I, I don't mind losing some. I see. Right, right, right. Okay, so men are different. They, yeah. they, they're not born with a finite amount yeah. like we yeah. are. Yeah, we keep just keep producing. Keep producing. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well. Right. Okay. As long as they are healthy, they yeah. can keep producing until they are right. 70, 80. But you see, the thing is like, in terms of age, um, so the way more on the woman's age as compared to men. Men's age also uh, play into a factor, but probably much older, probably 50, 60. As right. I said, women probably above 40 years old is the quality and the quantity of the eggs will be uh, decreasing by a lot. Right. Okay. Yeah. So what's wow. sort of the age that you think women should generally think about doing this if, whether it's for social or medical reasons, what's that sort of age you think is kind of right for women to go, mm -hmm. if I'm going to do this, now is when I do it? I mean, per se, there are no uh, uh, definite age, mm -hmm. right? Every age, all ages we can freeze, but the probably the golden age will be between 30 to 35. Oh, you know, really? Right? Okay, okay. Yeah. Because once above 35, your eggs quality, quantity tend to reduce uh, more drastically. And any younger? Younger, and then if, let's say you freeze younger, but then let's say you freeze That's at 25, point. Yeah. then you still have uh, right, 15 right. years of your fertility. Right, right. Then right. by the time you might not actually use up your, your eggs frozen eggs. eggs. Right, right, right. So I think in terms of, I mean, practical, it's between 30 to 35. All right. Yeah. Unless it's a medical reason, yeah. right? right. Okay. Okay. Mm. 
So what are some of the complications or challenges with this process, both mm -hmm. in the freezing aspect of it or extraction, mm -hmm. as well as the, with the woman? Right. Generally, egg freezing or generally IVF as a whole is uh, tolerable. Uh, most women can tolerate it well. Sometimes they just say that they take it like a breeze. All right? um, mostly what they will uh, say that they will feel a bit of bloated during the injections, right. Right? a bit of uh, pain during the injections. Why is that bloated, bloating all the, the time? The bloated is because all the hormones inside your body is start building up right. and your ovaries start getting bigger. Okay. That's why you feel the bloatedness. Right? Mm. So these are, sometimes they might complain a bit of dizzy, headache. Right. These are quite mild, bearable. And the egg retriever generally is also, like I said, a short procedure, 10-15 minutes and you can go back after two hours. So generally it's quite uh, bearable. Rarely, uh, some women develop uh, ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome right. or HSS, meaning that too many eggs are stimulated, the hormone in the body is very high, they will suffer like a severe abdominal pain, very I bloated, see. Okay, okay. Yeah. Right, right. even like uh, loss their appetite, vomiting, shortness of breath. Okay. In a severe form can be life threatening. And rarely we uh, see that the bleeding in the ovary or infection in the ovary during the egg retriever. Caused by the egg retriever. Yeah. Is, are these things that happen can happen really quickly, or are these things kind of things you could monitor that you know that it's mm. happening? You know the signs. So if let's say during the follow up when we see that they have like too many eggs, then we will new, uh, need to monitor, use different trigger to trigger the maturation of the eggs, and after that we will give certain medication to control, try to prevent the OHSS. Mm. And after the egg retrieval, normally we will um, give them follow up and we will monitor their symptoms. Okay. Yeah. And after the egg retrieval, we also give them painkiller and antibiotics to prevent from infections right, as right. well. I mean, there has been some stories um, out there about sort of w women having these and harvesting all of these mm -hmm. eggs and none of them being viable. Can mm -hmm. you explain a bit about how that might actually be the case? Most of the time, Nowadays, I think with, uh, it's very difficult to happen. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Um, there's this uh, something called empty follicle syn syndrome. Right. Meaning right. that okay. right. when we try to do the egg harvesting, but no eggs come out. Right. right. Because it's, em it's an empty follicle? or yeah, So the empty follicle can be uh, a few reasons. So maybe you didn't do the injection correctly, okay. you didn't do the trigger shots, you know. Generally, it's very rare, right? Most of the time, we will definitely will get the eggs out, right? right? So this is one. That's why we need to have proper counseling to the patients mm. and make sure they had uh, do the injection correctly. I mean, the second reason, like when we talk about the viability of the eggs, like yeah. I said, if let's say you use a very good freezing method, like the vitrification method, it generally have a very good survival. So. Mm. Let's say you store it, whether it's like two months, six months, three years, five years down the line, it shouldn't be an issue on the survival of the eggs. For them, for a lady to have, I suppose, healthier eggs, is there mm. something that they can do on their own mm. to eat better, drink ch more Chinese tea? Ge I, <laughs> I mean, it's a good question. So generally, um, what I want to tell you is that you, you can't really control your eggs quality or things like that. Oh, really? Because okay. like let's say you are oh. born with it already. And yeah, in a way that you can have a healthy lifestyle, you know, mm. eat properly, sleep properly, you know. Um, right. But sometimes we cannot determine whether your egg quality is good or not mm. until we do the egg extraction, take the eggs out, and then we see under the microscope. Right. Right. Okay. okay. But definitely a, a healthy lifestyle will help. Right. So I don't believe any of these weird tonics and stuff that say, mm. you know. You know what I mean? Uh, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There's so much. It will around. help you uh, get pregnant and it will help your eggs be stronger. Yeah. You always see all this, much like how we always see all those ads in the, yeah. in the traffic lights to help men, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dr. G, but, but you see, the thing is like, uh, that's why age is everything. Let's say you want to buy a property, the sound, right? Yeah. yeah. The location is everything. When you want to get pregnant, when you want to do fertility treatment, 
basically age is everything. I mean, yeah. The form age matters. Yes. Yeah. Right? Okay. Mm. Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Right, right. Um, doctor, do you think that, you know, sort of freezing eggs, what's available to women now, has mm. actually helped destigmatize career women who, you know, want to have their children at a later date or when it's more convenient to them mm. or even given them a way around that stigma? I, I think um, definitely, right? You see, nowadays women are born to multitask. They yeah. have to juggling a lot of things, you know. They have to meet a lot of social expectation. They have to be good in school, good in the workplace. Yeah. Uh, they have been good daughter, they have been a good wife. And last but not least, they have to produce children yeah, yeah. and take care of them. So. They are basically a multitasker, right? They are, but they ha and in a way they have to be good in it. So in a way, egg freezing can help them to plan out their time, mm -hmm. uh, along with a suitable partner and a stable finances. So to speak, egg freezing can uh, freeze their fertility, mm -hmm. put their fertility on ice, right? Literally, yes, literally. literally. Yeah, literally yeah. <laughs> okay. So it's. In a way, it empower them, yeah. give them the reproductive freedom, mm. and decide on what they, they want mm. along the way. Yeah. Do you think, in a in a in a funny way, also, what you're making available mm. is also helping women not make the wrong decision and choice in partners because they're trying to hurry this along? Yeah. yeah. Mm. I mean, yes, yes to speak. I mean, so to speak, yes. Um, it's, but the things that you never know what happened. So, basically, egg freezing is like an insurance policy. Mm -mm. You buy it, you hope that you don't need to use it, mm. yeah. but right. yeah, when you need it, you can use it, you, are, you feel protected. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, this insurance policy that you're selling, Doc, <laughs> 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 what's it going to set me back? <laughs> yeah, how, how, yeah, how, how much does this cost? So, uh, basically, it's around 20,000, right? 20,000 ringgit. So you might wondering why some clinics are more expensive than the other. Like yeah. I mentioned before, it depends on what type of technology they use. Right. The better ones the, that can guarantee you a sur better survival rate will be more expensive. So you must look into all the details before you choose the right clinic. Okay. Other than this one, then you'll be have a... Uh, depends on how many rounds you do need to do the egg retrieval.